Hello everyone, welcome to the course on development of e-content. So, this, is, this is a course on guide, uh, developing some guidelines for e-content. So, in this course what I am going to talk about is about the structure in e-content development. Goals and structure are one of the most important critical aspects of e-content development because in e-content the student is not in front of you and the structure becomes very important, very critical for the student in understanding the course. In uh, de discussing about the structure and the goals, the things that I am going to deal about is how clear course goals are necessary, what they mean, clear course goals actually mean that the student will be uh, knowing exactly what uh, skills he will be gaining, what expertise he will be gaining after going through the course. So, it has to be that skill or uh, expertise has to be mentioned in terms of very specific objectives, not something very uh, vague or abstract like the uh, student will appreciate something, some subject or the student will appreciate, understand some um, certain principles. It has to be very specific, very clear based on things the student will be able to do. So, these state, uh, things that the student will be able to do are usually uh, expressed in terms of statements which are called instructional objectives. So, we need to know what are instructional objectives. After talking about instructional objectives, we will relate the instructional objectives to cognitive levels. That means, the levels of learning, whether the objectives need to be in a very um, superficial level, trivial level, memorization level or it needs to go deeper. And finally, we will be talking about the specification matrix. So, these are the three things I will be talking about in my module and in this particular lecture, I am going to only focus on the instructional objectives, what instructional objectives are and how they are formed. <coughs> so, coming to instructional objectives, I have already said that instructional objectives are statements, where it is stated what the students will be able to do after receiving the instruction. So, the emphasis of the entire instructional objective lies in the fact that the student will be able to do something on the performance component of the objective. It uh, is not to be formulated with vague terms, but exactly what the student will be able to do after receiving the instruction, something he was not able to do before the instruction, but he will be able to do after the instruction. And this statement needs to be very specific, measurable and observable. So, in making the statement specific, measurable and observable, we are to avoid uh, abstract terms or ambiguous terms like understand, appreciate um, or uh, able to uh, understand. So, these terms are to be avoided. In formulating instructional objective, two other things we have to keep in mind and that is the instructional objective has to be a statement which deals about the learner. Instructional objective has to be a statement which says what the learner will be able to do, not what the teacher will be doing. So, the teacher may be doing anything, the teacher may be explaining, the teacher may be showing some video clips, the teacher may be uh, drawing a flow diagram, anything the teacher may be doing, but at the end of his activity, whether the student is learning or not. So, it is from always from the point of view of the learner, not the teacher. And the other thing about instructional objectives is that it has to be formulated with some verbs which are called action verbs. Now, verbs we all know uh, denote action uh, oriented words. So, verbs already denote action. So, what is action verb? So, action verbs are actually verbs which um, refer to uh, things that can be uh, actions which can be measurable which are specific. So, if we say understand, understand is also a verb, but if we say list, it is something which is measurable, which can be observed, but understand cannot be measured or observed. Therefore, understand is not an action verb, but list is an action verb. So, any verb which will allow a person to see the action, measure the action, observe the action are called action verbs. 
So, in formulating instructional objectives, we need to use these action verbs. Only those will make the instructional objectives very clear, specific and correct. <coughs> so, instructional objectives which are formulated with action verbs, some of the action verbs are uh, uh, examples of action verbs are identify, assess, list, solve, analyze, design, compare. So, if you look at each of these verbs, these verbs specifically uh, denote an action which can be observed and measured. Whether a student is able to identify certain characteristics of a principle, you can see. But if you say the student will understand the principle, you will not be able to see whether the student is understanding how much he is understanding. So, these are the verbs which are called action verbs. Some examples with action verbs are here in some of the statements which we often use, we think are objectives, but we, we these should not be used in the development of e-content, these are not proper instructional objectives. Student will know Newton's law of motion. So, how much the student is knowing, what exactly he is knowing, nothing is clear from the word know. So, in all these four objectives, all of them feel, understand, know, these are very vague verbs. They are verbs, but vague, they are not action verbs. Calculate on the other hand is a verb which is an action verb, because you can see whether a person is able to calculate what he is calculating, whether the calculation is correct or not. Therefore, it is specific, measurable and observable and so calculate is an action verb. So, this is just an uh, example uh, to give you an idea about the use of action verbs and uh, uh, verbs which are not action verbs. So, appropriate and inappropriate action verbs. Appropriate action verbs will result in proper instructional objectives. Here are some examples, two examples of instructional objectives. The instructional objective which is stated at the beginning in yellow color is a usual uh, objective that is made by many instructors. It is like a uh, student will know after this course, after this training program, the student will, will know how to write a customer reply letter. But here, this is not really a very well structured instructional objectives. What are the reasons? The reasons are first the use of the word no. No is a verb, but it is not an action verb. So, if we instead of no, we write right, use the word right, use the verb right, which is something which is specific and measurable, then it becomes an action verb and it becomes an instructional objective. Other than that, the instructional objective which is given at the beginning will know how to write a customer reply letter does not have the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions which we call the condition component and the criteria component in instructional objectives make the instructional objectives much more clear, specific and structured. So, what are the boundary conditions given here? Within 5 minutes and with no spelling mistakes and by using a word processor. If you include these conditions, these uh, boundary conditions, then the instructional objective becomes so clear that there is no scope for any misunderstanding or doubt by the learner. So, he knows exactly what he is supposed to be doing. Second example also is the same, the uh, statement given in yellow color is the usual objective that is formed by many uh, teachers or many textbooks or content. Student will be able to understand constructivism. So, understand is a verb, but it is again not an action verb, it is vague, it is not specific. So, in, instead of that, uh, if we use uh, things like uh, accurately identify, then that becomes a very specific, very clear observable uh, verb, which again becomes an action verb. And the boundary conditions are also built into the objective. So, given examples and non-examples of constructivist activities, that means the student will be provided with examples and non-examples. Only then the student will be able to accurately identify, not understand, but accurately identify the constructi constructivist examples and explain why each example is or is not a constructivist activities in 20 words or less. So, this makes the objective very, very clear. So, if you form your instructional objectives in this manner, 
through action verbs and giving the boundary conditions, then the instructional objectives become statements which are very specific, very clear and it is it becomes a big help in framing the content in e-learning. So, this these are the main the basic needs of framing instructional objectives in e-learning. Sometimes instructional objectives can be covert, especially when you are developing e-content uh, material or uh, developing e-content for some um, topic, you uh, fall back upon or refer to certain existing syllabus. And in the existing syllabus, often times a, a statement is given uh, starting with the word understanding. The student will understand certain things, understand safety procedures in a shop floor for a training um, scenario. But if you come across such objectives, such statements, you need to break it down until it becomes very specific and clear and measurable. So, understanding safety procedures is not clear, it is an covert objective. You can usually break it down into what the person will be doing if he understands safety procedures. First thing he will be doing is he will be following safety principles, safety rules. He will be wearing safety equipment. He will be taking care of all the equipment properly so that there are no accidents. So, these are the things he will be doing if he understands. So, what you are essentially doing is you are breaking down the covert statement into overt objectives which are measurable and clear and specific. So, in the course of developing the e-content, you may have to often break down covert objectives into overt objectives. So, this concludes the uh, portion which deals with instructional objectives and how to make instructional objectives. In the next video, we will be talking about learning levels, the cognitive levels, learning levels which should be used in the making of clear instructional objectives. Thank you.